All right. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Aubrey McLaughlin. I am the Director of Events for the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. We are so excited that you're able to join us for today's Caregiver Community Connection. It is our C3 webinar series presented by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and powered by our partners at Wounded Warrior Project and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Our goal in this series is to bring military, veteran, and family caregivers engaging content on important topics and provide opportunities for peer connection and support. Today's webinar is Don't Sweat It, Stress-Free Home Workout, and it features small business owner Stephen Kidd, who is co-owner and certified personal trainer at Phoenix Fitness in Arlington, Virginia. His workout assistant today will be our very own Jasmine Alfonso, who also happens to be Stephen's wife. Uh, Stephen has over 15 years of personal training experience and is ready to show us some simple tips and tricks to maintain your fitness while in quarantine. No weights or equipment are required for today and all fitness levels are welcome. All you need today is yourself, a towel, and some water close by. The goal of today's C3 is to show you in-home workouts that can be e done easily um, while you're staying at home. Before we get started, I want to mention to all attendees that this is a recorded broadcast and we're always open to suggestions on future topics uh, and speakers to feature. If you have any ideas, please feel free to send them right to us. We have a lot of workouts to learn today, but Stephen will take questions at the end of today's webinar and we will be conducting a few polls throughout the episode. So please interact and share with us about your own physical fitness goals or struggles. We'll be engaging with you throughout today's session in the chat box. If you do have any questions during today's session, please feel free to submit those questions in the Q&A box that's located in our Zoom control panel. We'll be taking note of all questions and we'll do our best to get them answered live for you during the Q&A portion of today's program. For those of you that are joining our Facebook Live through our Hidden Hero Caregiver community page, welcome. We're excited you're able to join us for you, please feel free to submit any questions you have by commenting on the video through our Facebook page. And we will have polls during today's episode. We also encourage you to comment your answers uh, in the uh, comment box as well on the Facebook page. As a very special bonus, we have two lucky participants that will receive a one hour video personal training session with Steven and a $25 Amazon gift card. So stay tuned for those winners to be announced later in this session. And if you live in the DC or Virginia uh, metro area and are a frontline worker, a caregiver, veteran, or military service member, we are giving a year membership to Phoenix Fitness as a thank you for your service. So also stay tuned for that later on in this program. We will send the location of Phoenix Fitness uh, in the chat box for you. So you can see exactly where it is. And for those of you who live in the DC, Virginia area, please let us know in the chat box and note if you're a frontline worker, a caregiver, veteran, or a military service member. Um, that's all that we need to know in order to qualify you to win this grand prize today. Um, and as if the giveaways were not enough, we will have a very special message towards the end of this broadcast from Team Red, White, and Blue's Executive Director, Mike Irwin. He will share information with us about the upcoming 1776 Challenge, which is, which is an 18-day epic physical challenge that will bring veterans, caregivers, and community members together uh, to soar to new, new limits and honor men and women who fought for our freedom. Now, without further ado, let's get sweating. Please join me in welcoming Stephen Kidd and Jasmine Alfonso as we get started in this at-home workout. Stephen, take it away. Thanks, Aubrey. Again, I'm Stephen Kidd. I'm here in our, my PT studio at Phoenix Fitness here in Arlington. My business partners, Sharni and Remy and I have been proudly serving the Arlington community for about 10 years now. Uh, this is a pretty cool experience for me to be able to give back to the community a little bit. We've done small community outreach before, but this is our first time reaching out to military caregivers, our veterans, and that means a lot to me. My father served in Vietnam as an officer in the Navy, and he uses the VA for his medical needs. Uh, and so this is a, a cool new experience for me. So today I've got about seven warm-up exercises that we're gonna perform here in the studio. Uh, then I'm gonna run you through 17 different 
body weight exercises and various modifications that you can do at home with or without equipment. And then we'll finish up with some light stretching. Feel free to do this with me or you can watch and just take notes. So for our warm up, just to get loosened up, we wanna get the blood flowing and we're calling this a dynamic warm up. We're gonna start off with hip swings. My feet are straight and I'm just trying to get rotation of the hips. So you'll see me sweeping across. And we're just getting 10 to 15 repetitions of each side. So good full range of motion, do the best that you can. If you're at home, you can hold on to a couch, you can hold on to your kitchen counter, a chair, anything that'll help you balance. So from the hip swings, after we've done a few of those, I want you to do some knee pulls. And I need you to give me a big bear hug here. A lot of people when they're warming up kind of take their warm up for granted. They kind of lazily go through it, but it's important to get the blood flowing. So give me some good knee pulls. From there, our next warm up exercise, toe taps. We're trying to loosen up those hamstrings. We've all been sitting down a little too much during this pandemic and we need to be active. Oh, so once you get those hamstrings warmed up, let's drop our chest down and we're flapping our arms. Really try to open up your chest here. Just crisscross back and forth. And again, we only need about 10 to 15. From there, we're dropping down the mat and we're doing bird dogs. So we're on our hands and knees. Nice flat back, make a tabletop, and go elbow to opposing knee. Reaching out nice and long, keep your core tight. And again, we're using this to warm up our glutes, our hamstrings, our shoulders, and our core. So let's just get a few more of those. Try to focus on your balance. And then from there, to loosen up our back some more, a yoga move, cat and cow. And just focus on loosening up your lower back. And so we're doing these dynamic warm up moves to get the blood flowing. You want to start off with motions like this before you work out to tell your muscles to turn on. We want to stay away from our static stretches and wait till the end of our workout because they help tell our muscles shut down. It's time to rest. So now let's go into our chest and shoulders component. So we all know what a push-up is. You veterans definitely know what a push-up is. You've done thousands of them, but not everybody's great at doing them at home. So the mistake a lot of people make is they get too long with their arms. I want your hands right underneath your chest, nose is out in front, and our proper push-up is like so. We're not letting our hips cheat up. We're not sagging at the hips. Keeping a nice straight line. And so if you can't do a push-up on your own, we can use a wall. And again, keep those hands in line with your chest. And you're getting wall push-ups. If you want to make this a little more challenging, make it a ply of a push-up. I'll give you another angle over here. So, elbows stay wide. We're using our chest here. We're using our triceps. We want to make it harder. We make it plyometric, which just means it's explosive. So, coming back to the floor, we're still working on trying to get to our toes, but we're not quite there yet. You've got your knee push ups. Once these get too easy for you, but you still can't quite do that toe push-up, then we're gonna do knee to toe push-ups. And so you'll come all the way down on your knees, up, and then pick the knees up. Just a nice, simple motion, smooth. Notice how low I'm going. And that's just to help build us up into doing traditional push-ups. Once you get there with that wide stance we're working our chest if we want to 
change it up a bit, we narrow our hand positioning. And now we're gonna do more of a tricep push up. It's a good way to build up the back of your arms and a good way to keep your body guessing. The more variations we can do to each exercise, the less likely our body's gonna get used to it. We need to keep it guessing, keep it adapting. So from there, we're gonna go on to our second exercise. And it's a shoulder push up. I'm gonna start out using a chair. We're hinging at the hips and we're up on the balls of our feet. My legs are straight and we're dropping down. Notice that I'm pivoting on my toes. That's our fulcrum. So we're just gonna get you know, 10 to 25 of these. Depends on what your goals are. If you're just purely looking to get stronger, then you wanna keep the reps down. If you're trying to build muscular endurance, then we wanna to try to kick those repetitions up. Once you get to where the chair push-up is too easy, then that's your time to come to the floor. Again, we're still keeping our legs straight. Weights on my toes and my arms, and I'm going all the way down. Nice deep range of motion. The lower you go, the better. Again, with all of our movements, we're trying to get a nice full range of motion. From there, let's stay on the floor. We've got plank ups next. It's a core exercise, but it's also shoulders. So, nice flat back, back. We're just going up and down. And this is at a cadence of a four count. One, two, three, four, up and down. If you can't do it from your toes, put those knees down, pick the feet up, stay long, and just up and down. Again, keep your core tight. We're using our anterior delts, our medial delts, our triceps, and our rectus abdominis. And again, you can do all these exercises for 10 to 25 reps if you want to count reps, or if you want to try them all for time, try them for 30 to 60 seconds. It's a good way to give you a variation. Uh, the last one I have in the shoulder and chest block you're in a side plank position, hand at your head, and I want you to rotate to the floor and open up. And again, we're just getting 10 to 25 on each side, or you can hold it for time. If you can't do the side plank, a good way to abbreviate the motion is to drop the hip down, knees down, elbows on the floor, Stay as long as you can, and then to build up, you can get that leg up and keep going through that motion. So again, we're supporting the weight with our shoulder. We are either using your knee or your foot for the base, and then this rotation is a good way to loosen up your back and your posterior delts. Uh, we're moving on to our back and arms component. And so my first one is a door frame row. You don't have to have a whole lot of space, just a door frame. You're gripping each side, you're pivoting on your heels. Make sure you squeeze your upper back. We're trying to squeeze our shoulder blades together. And as we pull, make sure you squeeze those shoulder blades together. We're using our rhomboids our traps, our posterior delt, and our biceps. If you do have equipment, i.e. a dumbbell, a backpack, we can do a bent over row. And I've got a sandbag here, but again, you can use a purse, a backpack. If we're doing that bent over row, it's critical that you make sure you keep a nice flat back. We don't want to slouch. Push your hips back, push your chest out, and squeeze. If you don't have anything that you're comfortable with or if you have dumbbells, dumbbells are great. If you want to use a gallon of water, a gallon of water weighs about eight and a half pounds. Or if you're fortunate enough to be able to get resistance bands from Amazon before everybody bought them, 
then you can use a resistance band for your roads. Uh, and that would look like this if you got it. Sit back, keep those elbows wide. The wider you go, the more back you're using. If you want to change it up, drop your elbows down and keep them close. And again, you can do that on your door rows. I'm going to pretend my bar here is the door frame. I can bring those hands in a little bit tighter and I'm working a lot more bicep. Uh, from there, we're going to come down to the floor and I'm going to show you a few versions of the Superman. So the one a lot of you will have seen is a Superman like so, where you're lifting up the chest and the legs. This is a good one to start. I also prefer to come like so with my palms up. And when I lift my chest here, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Nice, slow, crisp range of motion. Up and down. Again, we're doing 10 to 25. If you've got weights, give it a try with the weights to your side. Up and squeeze. Another variation, put them out like a T. Lift them all the way up. Remember, squeeze the shoulder blades. And if you want to make it really hard, bring those arms out to the front, make that Y, and lift. All right, from there, let's see, where am I now? We got dips. Everybody's got a chair at home. You can use a chair, you can use your bathtub. Let's rotate. Don't get too far away. So I'm dropping straight down. Now, if you've got bad shoulders, may or may not want to try this one out. You want to get them loosened up and develop some strength first. But a lot of people, as they do dips, they cheat away. You don't want to do that. You want to drop straight down. If you can tap your butt, that's awesome. But don't push it too far. Resist the urge of using your legs. You're cheating if you're using your legs. You can use them when you first start to help you get into the exercise. But as we get stronger, we want to take them out of the equation. If you start getting a little bit better with them, and you've got the means at home or a gym whenever we're all able to open up again, some parallel bars would be awesome. Because that allows me to get my body straight in line with my hands and I'm dropping down. Again, go as low as you're comfortable with. Try not to cheat with the legs. And drive up. Notice my arms are getting straight, but I'm not locking at the elbows. And then the last thing we've got for our back and arms are curls. Again, you can use your milk jug. If you fill it up, you're eight and a half pounds. We've got dumbbells. If you don't have anything, snag a backpack, snag a purse, and you can do your curls like so. Now, if you look at my wrist position, when my thumbs are up, I'm doing a hammer curl. And that's gonna bring in our biceps and some of our forearm. When our palm is up, like so, it's mostly biceps. You wanna keep that chest up, your core tight, None of this now. Don't arch your back. If it's so heavy that you've got to start arching your back, you're cheating. You're just probably too heavy. If you're fortunate enough to have dumbbells at home and you want to make it a bit harder, then add a rotation to it. And by adding this rotation, we're cranking up how much energy we're using, which means more calories burned. As we do these curls, 
Notice my elbow position. I'm keeping them tight by my sides. You don't want to flow, flow them out. You don't want to kick. Keep everything nice and crisp. Uh, hopefully those were good chest and back exercises for you. Again, make sure you warm up the muscles before you do these exercises and get properly warmed up. Five to 10 minutes is good. It goes a long way towards injury prevention. Uh, so now we're gonna take a short water break and transition back to Aubrey. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Stephen. I'm clearly wearing the wrong thing. I can't be doing these alongside of you, but um, this has been really awesome. And we have um, a quick poll here to um, gauge with our attendees. I'm gonna launch it here in just a second. We have two questions in this poll. The first one is, what is your current fitness activity level? Um, so either five to seven days a week, three to four days a week, one to two times a month, three to five times a year, or no activity. No answer is the wrong answer, so please uh, uh, let us know um, how active you are. And then what are your fitness goals? Uh, we have weight loss, muscular strength, muscular endurance, or overall health and fitness. And Stephen, I'm gonna throw it back to you because I know for me, um, muscular strength and muscular endurance sound similar. So can you uh, talk about how they're different? Yeah. Uh, so muscular strength, we're building it up when we're going heavy. Uh, a lot of people just assume that because they're lifting weights that they're either going to get bulky, they're going to get stronger. There's various ways of getting stronger. If you're going to try to gain muscular strength, you're going to go fewer reps, heavier weight. If you're going for muscular endurance, then you're going to go lighter weight, more repetitions. Generally what I do with my clients here at the gym is I try to stick to the 10 to 15 rep count range. So that way I can do both of muscular strength, muscular endurance. When I'm training my clients in their periodization for just muscular strength, we're doing like three sets of five to eight, no more than that. Uh, and so with my clients, I like to do periodization. I'll spend a time just getting them fit, which just gets them used and proficient with exercises. Then we'll go to muscular endurance, and then we finish up with muscular strength once we're in proper shape to lift those heavy weights. Uh, and hopefully that's a, clarified it for a lot of the people on today. Again, if people have questions afterwards, I'll definitely chime in and try to clear those up. Perfect. Awesome, thank you so much for that clarification. We also, in this quick break here, are going to hand out two uh, prizes today uh, to two winners. Again, these two folks are going to receive a $25 Amazon gift card, and they're going to receive a complimentary one-hour training session, which will be on video, with Steven, who is our host for today. So our two winners for this little break session are going to be Lindsay Anderson and Marvin Owen. We'll be reaching out to you in the chat box to get your contact information and we'll be in touch with you about how to uh, set those prizes up and get those over to you. But congratulations to our winners here. Um, and before we wrap up and I, I give it back to you, Stephen, um, we have um, uh, some results to share from our polls today. So it looks like the majority of folks that are joining us today are active about three to four days a week. So that's great. We do have a couple of folks that are five to seven days. That is awesome. Congrats, good for you guys. Um, and for our fitness goals, it looks like the majority of people are really um, doing this for their overall health and fitness. That's awesome. Uh, and then we have a really good mix about uh, some other reasons. So weight loss, obviously, muscular strength and muscular endurance are all um, between 35 and, or 25 and 35% of you. So um, that's awesome to see uh, that variety of goals here. So I am going to throw it back to you. We're gonna get into some more exercises. All right, sounds good. That's awesome that we've got such an active group today. Uh, so yeah, so now this next block, we're just gonna work on our legs to start off. Everybody knows how to squat. Not everybody does it right, so. 
Great exercise for your quads, your hamstrings and glutes, and even your core as long as you do it right. As I'm squatting down, notice how my hips travel back. Really trying to focus on keeping my knees over my ankles. If you squat and you push those knees forward past your toes, that's bad. That's gonna put a lot of tension on your patella tendon, which is gonna make your knees angry or it's gonna make your quads angry. Really try to keep your chest upright and drop those hips down. If you're doing a body weight squat, go as low as you can. The lower you go, the more you're gonna activate your glutes. We've all been sitting on them too often here lately, so let's work them out. From there, if you wanna add a variation to it, you can squat and kick. And this just helps with our balance. It'll help with our hamstring flexibility, which I know from the gym, almost everybody that comes in here, way too tight in those hamstrings. If you wanna add some core work to it, we go hands up to our head and we're gonna squat, oblique crunch. And again, if you wanna get 10 to 25 on each side, that's a pretty good rep range for this. If you're feeling good and you're getting loose, you wanna test out your flexibility, then let's go overhead squat. And look how long I'm keeping my arms. If your posterior chain is tight, which is your back, glutes, and hamstrings, and calves, you won't be able to keep these arms up. If you're tight, they'll break, your chest will drop, and you'll lose form. To help you keep your form, use a chair. Sit back and get up. And then you can go into your overhead squat from that. Sit and stand up. With a lot of my clients, just a simple piece of PVC pipe or a dowel rod. This is how I trained the overhead squat technique. Again, going as low as possible, pushing those hips back. And that's a good way to see how flexible you are. If you don't have any weights, you wanna make those squats more challenging. Pistol squats, legs in front, and you're dropping all the way down. Again, we don't all have the ballet bar. Put on your kitchen counter, a couch, anything that you feel confident you can balance with. But just try those out. And again, use your chair. Sit back, stand up. For you veterans and your caregivers that are getting older, working on these is a, a good motion for you. We gotta, as we age, we've gotta make sure that we have the strength to get up and down. A lot of people have a hard time with it as they get older. So if you can keep that strength up, it's a good way to age healthy. So moving on from there, we're gonna go into step back lunges. And again, look at my knee position. As I step back, my knee is over my ankle. I'm dropping down, I'm at 90 at the bottom. We're not pushing forward. So I like the step back lunge because it's a bit more knee friendly. We don't have to travel anywhere. When we do walking lunges in the gym, a lot of times people come down and they think the whole motion's about progressing forward. So even at the bottom, they're pushing forward, loading up their patella tendon which is just gonna make that knee angry. If you're doing a lunge, that step is the only forward or back motion, and then you drop straight down. So, once you get comfortable with these, we wanna activate our glutes. Down, up, kick. Down, up, kick. And really try to keep that chest up. It's not, 
You're not doing that. We're getting hip flexibility. If you're tightening your hip flexors, that'll actually feel like a good stretch. So we've got our blue kick there, or we can step and knee drive. And again, we're just working full range of motion here. Remember, you gotta do each leg. And you can kick at the top. And this should get your heart rate going. We're using a lot of big muscles here in these lunges. So they're good to do. From there, we're gonna spin over to the wall. Oh, sorry. Getting ahead of myself. The last thing in the lunge to make it harder, we're gonna pulse. And this is tough. I like to do 30 seconds on each leg. Again, I'm using each leg. So quads on the front, hamstrings, glutes on the back. All right, now let's go to the wall. Another good exercise you can do anywhere, at home, on the road, wall sit. My hamstrings are parallel to the floor. I'm not up high. I'm not leaning forward, cheating, just hanging out, having a chat. I'm laid back. I don't know if you can see it at home, but if you want to make it more challenging, pick those toes up. So with my toes up, I'm engaging my tibialis in the front of my leg. That's the muscle that you all feel if you've got shin splints. It's a good muscle to work on. That but when those toes are up, we're changing the dynamic of your quads. Another variation, as we stay down, we pick those calves heels up. You can do seated calf raises. If you got some weight, a young child, anything, you can put that across your lap, make this wall sit a lot harder. And then the last one I want to do at the wall sit, and again, these are just variations, build it up as you can. Arm slides. So sit, hands and elbows against the wall, and slide up as you're doing a shoulder press. This looks easy, but the majority of my clients have a hard time getting their hands back. If you can't get your hands back, it means you got tightness in your chest, anterior delt, and deep in there, we've got a rotator cuff. So, if you can't get your hands back behind your head, we need to loosen this up. That arm slide motion up the wall, help you figure out how tight your chest is. From there, we're going down on the mat. And we've got, I'm gonna do small and large leg circles. When I do these with my clients, I generally have them do 30 seconds forward, and all that motion's at the hip. You'll see people bending their knee, flailing, looking spastic. It's not what I want. I want a nice, crisp, distinct motion, all of the hip, big circles. So we're doing 30 seconds forward, 30 seconds back. You'll do each side, and then you've got your large leg circles. Still 30 seconds forward, 30 seconds back. If you want to add some core stability into this, and your shoulders, come up into side plank. And you can do your leg circles there. If you got time to spare, after you've done that, you want to get a third round at home, do your ABCs, all capital letters. This will take a while, but it's really going to burn out your hips. You should feel this right down your IT band. Definitely feel it in your glutes. Everything should be burning when you get done with this. So it's a nice, nice simple motion that we can all do. It works on hip stability, hip strength. It'll keep your legs toned. At the end, I've got a link that'll take you to a website that has a lot more leg exercises that you can do. Uh, but the four that I've showed you, they're pretty good ones to start with. So, all right, so from there, let's stay on the mat. 
we're going to transition to core. All of y'all know what a setup is. It's great. It's just fine. But you don't need to do it all the time. So some of the ones that I prefer that are a little bit different, I've got one that I call the penguin. And so I'm picking up my shoulder blades, abs are tight, and we're rocking side to side, reaching for your ankles. And you just keep rocking back and forth. Nice smooth motion. Now one thing that a lot of people do, they tense their neck. They either naturally tense or they tense because they sit all day and they carry their tension in their traps. If you're one of those people and you're doing the penguin, just bring your hand back here. Don't pull on your head. Just use the hand to support your weight. Just a nice, gentle cradling of the neck and the head so that you can focus on your abs. Again, do this for 30 to 60 seconds. You should get a good burn. Our second one, we call a homer crunch. We're making a, a loop with our arms. Our feet are on the floor and we're pulling our knees through that hoop. Don't ask me why it's called a homer crunch. I have no idea why, other than a long time ago, when I was learning how to be a trainer, that's what somebody told me it was called. But this is a good way to build up that upper and lower part of your rectus abdominis, which we call our abs. And then when we get good at the homer crunch, then we can transition into a jackknife. And the jackknife's a lot harder. You want to make sure you keep your lumbar spine down. For any of y'all that have done yoga, there's a thing called the pelvic tilt, where you tilt your hips, you lengthen your lumbar spine. It's a good thing to think about when you're doing core exercises. If you can keep all the load and tension on your abs, that way your lower back won't take over. So from the homer crunch to the jackknife, we're going into a bicycle crunch. Now I'm showing it the harder way where you're kicking those legs straight out. Elbow to opposing knee. Make sure you get those shoulder blades off. If you can't do that from the get-go, don't worry about it. Start here, coming across. Elbow to opposing knee. Then as you get stronger and fitter, you're going to pick that foot up. Remember, we're getting tight. And even though I'm talking as we do abs, think about exhaling as you make the contraction, okay? It'll collapse your diaphragm. It'll allow you to get tighter through the motion. So, take it slow and steady. You'll see people at the gym doing this, but not doing a whole lot. Slow it down, control the motion. If you can control the motion, you can get the most out of it. So moving on from there, we've got hands beneath your butt, in case you have to guard your lower back, point those toes, leg raises. You can't do a full leg raise, we can break it down, we can do kickouts. And with our kickouts, you want to pull those knees so tight into your chest, your hips roll off the floor. That'll be a good stretch for some of you. Another thing to work on, especially if you've got tight hamstrings, do single leg raises and get full range of motion. And once you get into these, make sure you control them. A lot of people try to get ballistic with it. It's not how we want to do our exercises, okay? We want to stay in control. And then last but not least, we're going to finish up with a good old-fashioned plank. Again, plank is, we're working our rectus abdominis, our rectus spinae and our back is engaging. We're also using our shoulders. We're engaging our quads at the knee. So, nice flat table. Don't get too long. Don't cheat the hips up. Don't let them sag. If you need to make it easier, drop to your knees. 
stay long though. If you're planking like so, you're not gonna get a whole lot out of it, okay? But once you get good at holding the plank for say a minute, we can make it more challenging by doing what's called a saw plank. Just back and forth. Now we're using my lats. You can see my calves engaging. From there, if you want to loosen up your lower back, add some rotations, okay? Another modification you can do is hold that up plank. Still using our core, still using our shoulders, but now we're firing our triceps. So that's our core component. Uh, again, I like to do all five of these with my clients. And sometimes I do it as a grand finale. I make them do 10 minute abs. They'll do all five of these in a row with minimal rest to finish up their workout. So as our workout's coming to an end, we're gonna move into static stretches. Now? I'm just stretching. Okay, uh, so I believe we're going back to Aubrey at this moment. And we'll do stretches when we come back. Yes, awesome. Thank you guys so, so much. I have learned so much stuff sitting here watching you. Um, I'm excited to do some new workouts. I know we've put these workouts in the chat. We'll also be sending you guys these workouts in our follow-up communications that will go out tomorrow along with the recording of this session. So thank you so much, Stephen. Um, I'm now going to announce um, some more prize winners that we have. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we had anybody um, in the DC area um, who's connected with us today. We did have someone who is about to leave the DC area, so that doesn't really do any good for a membership. But we would love, love, love to give away two more Amazon gift cards uh, instead of the grand prize membership. And so we're gonna award those gift cards today to Leah Whitmire and to Michelle Pritchard Bell. So congratulations to you two. We'll be reaching out to you both in the chat in order to get your contact information to make sure that we can get you those gift cards. So congratulations again. Uh, and before we dive into questions uh, from the audience, we would like to have Team Red, White, and Blue's Executive Director Mike Irwin briefly share some information with us about the 1776 Challenge. So I'm going to welcome Mike onto the screen here. Um, let me see. I'm going to ask him to start his video. Mike, are you there? Hello. How are you? I'm going to unmute you here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Excellent. Welcome, Mike. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. Really great to be here today. So first of all, great to always see uh, fired up physical activity going on. Um, you know, one of the driving things at Team Red, White, and Blue, you know, of course, our mission is to enrich the lives of America's veterans. And a big part of the way we do that is by engaging veterans and supporters in physical activity. And again, I don't have to say it probably too loudly uh, to this audience today, but um, you know, this is such a powerful way, staying physically active, you know, to help our mental well-being on top of our physical well-being and also just our emotional well-being. So um, we're really excited to just share a little bit of information today about the 1776 challenge. So in summary, 18 days, 1,776 repetitions. I'm going to see if I can share my screen here um, and be able to show it to you a little bit. Um, hopefully you can see it. I know it's kind of, it's, an, it's, a, it's a JPEG, so it's uh, on my screen. Can you see the image right now? Yes, I can. It looks great. Okay, great. Excellent. So yeah, just to walk you through, like, you know, again, the origin here really is um, one of the key things about the physical activity that we know from the research is the power, so much of the power is in the consistency, right? So if you go run, you know, one day of the week, there's marginal benefit, but if you go out there and you walk or run, you know, every day for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, like the benefits become much more substantial. And so the, the idea here we also know is that, you know, it takes the research shows about 21 days to form new habits. And so the goal here is to really push and to challenge our members to create these uh, positive, good, healthy habits over an 18 day period. So starting in, in the middle of June, you can see there, like we start off with hundred lunges and then on all the way down, ending with 76 burpees on the, the 4th of July, there's essentially 100 reps. There's a, a one mile run there uh, in the middle of that. 
Um, but there's a hundred reps um, for various exercises. And the, again, the challenge is to, to just participate consistently every single day um, and to do these different exercises that engage different muscle groups. Um, and then part of it is, is the social component of this, especially in COVID times where we know uh, that a lot of people are either unable to or not interested in um, you know, going out and interacting in larger groups. The power of this, you can do this at home. You can do this right wherever you're at. Um, like really none of this requires equipment. So this is all, let's just call it like body weight and body resistance uh, sort of exercises. And that's great because it also makes it very accessible. So you can go onto our social media and you can, and you can learn more about the 1776 challenge and how to get involved. Um, we're really excited. It was, it was our most engaging event of, uh, of all last year. And we're looking forward to seeing even more uh, veterans and supporters to be a part of it this year. And so again, would welcome and, and really, uh, be excited to see as many people as possible to join us in this 18 day challenge um, starting here in a few weeks. Awesome, thank you so, so much. We're really excited about the 1776 challenge and thanks to, to Stephen's workout here today, I think we're all gonna be ready um, in the next couple of weeks to take that on. So uh, thank you so much, Mike, for joining us. We really appreciate the time. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and take the rest of this time here for some questions uh, for Stephen from the audience. So just as a reminder, if you have any questions, please be sure to type the questions in the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. If you're joining us from Facebook Live, be sure to type your questions in the comment box. We'll also be checking there as well. Um, so I know, um, Stephen, that we, um, we're about to get into some stretches. Are there some, can you talk to us about the importance of stretching and maybe show some um, uh, stretches that folks can do at home after a workout like this? Let me unmute you here. There we go. So, we go. yeah. Uh, so stretching is one of the things that I feel like everybody forgets about. Uh, I tell my clients to stretch. I ask them all the time, have you done their stretches? And more often than not, they unfortunately say, no, I forgot. I didn't take the time. But when I have a client come in, they're like, oh man, I went running today. My knees were killing me. Do I have an injury? More often than not, they're just tight. They're neglecting their stretches. If you can spend five to 15 minutes a day, every day, we all have 15 minutes we can put forward to ourselves. If you're gonna work out, you might as well seal the deal with stretches. It feels good. It's great health. So a few that I wanna show everybody. Again, we all carry too much tension up here. Just a gentle neck stretch. Don't pull hard. Just get a nice pull through the traps. If you got something heavy by you, use a dumbbell, use a kettlebell. Stretch through like so. Just hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. Relaxing through the motion. Just a good way to keep stress out of your traps. Some of us that get tension headaches, a lot of that comes from tight traps. So if you can take some of that pressure off your neck and your upper back, we can work on getting out of those tension headaches. Uh, for our chest, you can use a door frame, a bar, or in a grip, and we're gonna rotate through. And you're just trying to get a, rotate your hips to where you're getting a gentle pull through your pec major. So, you should feel this tighten up as you go through. Again, this is stationary. We're telling our muscles to shut down. That's what our static stretches are good for. So just a light hold. Uh, might not be the best angle, but for the next one, for our back and our shoulder stretch, we're going palms down on like your couch or a ballet bar. We're sitting back. We're pushing our butt back. And as I sit, my palms are down. I'm pulling through my triceps, my lats. It'll transition into my rector spinae. Once you're done with that, let's supinate our wrists. We're turning them up. We're doing the same thing. And this will change the dynamic in our shoulders. You'll still feel that pull through here, but you'll feel it more up top now. 
Another variation of that is we're gonna crisscross our hands now. Still sitting back, drop your head between your arms, and we're really gonna get a big pull on our shoulders. So I'll let go of the bar, but this is what it's gonna look like. And I'm trying to just get long all the way down my spine. So just do 15, 30 seconds like so, and transition. And again, this was the previous grip of the palms up. So moving on to our hamstrings, which again, everybody needs to work on. If you got a belt, if you're fortunate enough to have one of these, a stretching strap. Laying down on the floor is a great way to do it. This leg straight, one straight leg here. Don't lock it. Trying to get to 90. You can go further and further and further. Great. We want to go to mild discomfort. Uh, some of, that's different for some of us, but good stretching should be uncomfortable. If you want to bring it out wide, like so, again, you can use a belt. Do not use a resistance band. I've made that mistake before outside. Uh oh, for our inner thighs, pull them in, use those elbows, push those knees down. We're stretching out here. If you want to use your couch again, you can come up, you can stretch your hamstrings like so. If you want to get that inner thigh, rotate, reach down. Another thing to get on leg day, stretch out those quads. Your heels should be able to touch your butt. If you can't, you're tight. You need to work on it. You can do this laying down to stabilize your hips. Uh, calf stretch, just use a step at home. And we're just stretching out the back of our gastroc and our soleus. And then to finish up with our stretching, real easy tricep across and behind, and then biceps are tough because our elbow doesn't hyperextend. But if you turn the palm up, pull those fingers back, you'll get a nice deep stretch through the forearm, a bit in the bicep, then turn that wrist over, pull it back, and get those forearm extensors. Uh, that's all the stretches I have for the program. Can we go back to Aubrey? for a minute and then we'll finish up with the Q&A. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. We have a couple of minutes here. I just want to get through some questions. I know there's a lot of questions coming in that are more demo specific, Stephen. So I'm going to um, ask that um, we keep you ready to go. But do you yeah. have any, um, uh, we have somebody who is currently 34 weeks pregnant. So congratulations to you. Um, do you have any suggestions for specific core and upper body exercises that would be beneficial post-pregnancy. Post-pregnancy. Okay. She's playing so, ahead. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, post-pregnancy have at it. I mean, uh, the biggest problem with core exercises post-pregnancy is whether or not your rectus abdominis separates. Uh, some women have that, some don't. Uh, but again, modifying it to get back into shape, doing those planks is a good one. Uh, when you're doing your strength exercises, staying away from the machines at the gym, do your standing shoulder press, your standing curls, your delt raises, everything that you can do to engage your core. Uh, but yeah, the, try not to cheat with using a stationary machine. That just puts you on one plane. Uh, so yeah, I read that, I was thinking about somebody that was actually 34 weeks pregnant on what they needed to do. Uh, so yeah, once, once your doctor's cleared you for exercise, you can go back to your normal activity. You're not going to do the same weight. You're going to have to resist the urge of getting frustrated because you can't do what you did before. Uh, but all everything that we did today, that's a good starting point. Your lunges, your squats, you can modify all those ab exercises that I show, and that's a great way to build up your rectus abdominis. So uh, hopefully that was answer the question. If not, my email's on there and I'll take more questions from people. Awesome, thank you. And I'll share um, 
with everyone who is joining us ways to connect to um, Stephen and to Phoenix Fitness uh, for everyone that um, has additional questions past today. Um, do you, Stephen, have any modified exercises for, say, veterans with disabilities? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I showed various modifications of the things today. Uh, it's, I need to know what the disabilities are. And again, I don't mind reaching out to people within like, different circumstances. Uh, but, you know, if you're missing a leg, you know, you obviously can't do the step back lunge, but you can go through that range of motion. Uh, and, you know, it's a little more challenging with the balance, but if I want to do my step back lunge, if I don't have this leg, I can still sit back with it. It's going to look a lot like that pistol squat. But there are still ways to do it. Uh, I definitely wouldn't mind trying to, if people have got various exercises they're trying to figure out how to modify, uh, please post those and I'll try to answer that a little bit better. Awesome, thank you. We also had a question come in through our Hidden Hero Caregiver community um, from Facebook Live. Um, they are looking at the TRX suspension system. Uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, benefits, uses on that? Is it worth it uh, in order to um, uh, be physically active? I think the TRX suspension system is great. Uh, I have probably 20 TRX in my gym. We keep them mounted on all of our squat racks. We've got multiple TRX A-frames throughout the facility. TRX is awesome. It's a great utility tool to get an entire total body workout. Uh, they're pretty good. You know, back in the day, they just gave you a little manual. Now they've got an app that'll take you through all sorts of exercises. It's a good $200 splurge on a piece of equipment, seeing as you can do everything with it. Most of the time they come with a door mount. If you've got a place in your house that you can hang it to the ceiling, that's a little more ideal, but the door mount, you can still do 90% of the exercises, but you can hit your chest, your back, your legs, your core, there's stretches, and they're good functional movements. They're, they're movements that we can do day to day to get us better at just functioning with our, our daily lifestyle. So the, the TRX is an awesome piece of equipment. Uh, every gym ought to have one, and uh, they give pretty good literature on how to use it. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much. It looks like we have time for just one more question here, so I'm going to end with this final question. Um, how can I help keep bones healthy with osteoporosis? Any thoughts on workouts, or is it more of a dietary thing? Any thought there? No, the workouts is a big part of it. Uh, so I have probably six or seven clients in their 70s. Uh, I've got one guy that's 86. And that's something they're all thinking about, especially my female clients. Uh, Weight-bearing exercise, as long as it's performed safely with proper technique, is a great way to fight osteoporosis. Even some of the more dynamic movements, like I, I know it's crazy to think at 70 about doing a box jump, but I make some of my older clients do small box jumps and hop downs to give them that impact on their joints and their bones. The more we impact, the more external weight we put on those bones, the more our body figures out how to adapt and to strengthen those up. So yeah, you need a proper diet. You need good calcium. Definitely work with your diet on that. But proper strength training, two to four days a week, within six to 12 months, you should be able to see bone density changes in your skeletal structure. So definitely don't shy away from weights if you have osteoporosis issues, they're actually gonna be your friend. So if you're not in this area, you're somewhere else, after you've got cleared by your doctor, it's worth checking out a program from a local personal trainer to help you get in using those weights the appropriate way, and that'll go a long way towards healthy aging. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. It looks like we have covered all of our questions. I know we're getting to the top of the hour, so um, while we have you all with us, we do want to encourage everyone on today's session 
to join our Facebook group called the Hidden Heroes Caregiver Community. Uh, it is about connection, validation, understanding, support, and sharing resources. So please, please, please share that if you are on Facebook. Uh, we have about 2,300 active members, and so it's a great support system um, for all of our caregivers out there. Um, you'll also notice that we have another session coming up next week on June 18th. We are talking about whole health resources that are available to you. Uh, so if you're interested in attending next week's session, please register at hiddenheroes.org backslash C3. Uh, you'll also be on the lookout for a follow-up email from us that will include a recording of today's webinar, uh, Stephen's information and Phoenix Fitness contact information, and the link to join our Facebook community. So stay tuned for that. Um, we also, one last thing we wanna share with you, we know the last couple of months have been extremely difficult for our military and veteran families and especially their children. So with play dates, graduations, proms, recitals, and other really exciting milestones being canceled, the Elizabeth Dole Foundation wanted to do something really special for these hidden helpers. And so we have launched the Military Kids Have Talent virtual contest. It is a fun and creative contest where we invite all military children uh, to showcase special talents that make them unique. Uh, so you can learn how uh, your family can participate um, go right to hiddenheroes.org backslash talent. We'll also put this in the follow-up email as well. We are accepting submissions for our talent show um, from now until the end of this week, so June 12th. So please, 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 we want to see all the exciting things from your children. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. A huge thanks to our partners at Wounded Warrior Project and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs for supporting our C3 C3 series and a huge thank you to Stephen Kidd of Phoenix Fitness for taking us through today's workout. We hope that you found today's session informative and inspirational. Please stay in touch with our caregiver community and always remember that you are not alone. Have a wonderful day and take care. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.